Good evening to all of you. We have n identical cells of uh, EMF E and internal resistance R. We would like to make a network of these n cells such that it delivers maximum power in an external resistor R. So to solve this uh, question, first of all, let us get to the basics. Let us see cells in series. Cells in series. Supposing we have got cells here like this. Let's say I have got three cells of EMF E1, R1, E2, R2, E3 and R3. R1, R2, R3 are the internal resistances and we connect it to an external resistor R and there is a current I. We would like to know all these cells can be replaced by a single cell of EMF V0, what this E0 is, and by a single internal resistance delivering the same current I to the external resistor. So, how are E0 related to E1, E2, and E3, and how is R0 related to R1, R2, and R3? Well, uh, you can apply the, the Kirchhoff's. Uh, Law. If you apply the Kirchhoff law here, uh, go around the loop. Let's say I start from here. Uh, when I go from uh, lower potential to higher potential, rise in potential in a resistor, when you go in the direction of the current, there is a fall in potential. So I can say uh, if I see here minus I R3 plus E3 minus I R2 plus E2 minus I R1 plus E1 and this will be minus I into R equal to 0. I have gone round the loop starting from the uh, topmost corner right hand topmost right hand corner and gone anti-clockwise. As I said uh, as you go in a resistor when you go in the direction of the current, there is a fall in potential that we will say minus. For a cell, you go from a uh, negative terminal to the positive terminal, there is a rise in potential, so plus. So if you simplify this, you will get E1 plus E2 plus E3 equals I would be common. Take all this to the other side, you will get R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R. Or I would get I is equal to E1 plus E2 plus E3 by R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R. Now if I apply the Kirchhoff law to this circuit, if I go around, I will get minus R0 I plus E0 minus I into R equal to 0. That will give I equals E0 by R0 plus R. When you compare these two, compare these two, the same I you have got. So E0, so I can say when you have cells in series, E0 will be E1 plus E2 plus E3. The effective EMF would be E1 plus E2 plus E3 and the effective internal resistance would also add up R1 plus R2 plus R3, R0 will be R1 plus R2 plus R3. Now, if you had N identical if you had N identical cells, if there are N identical cells, in series, then what would E0 be? E0 would be, E0 would be simply 
e plus e plus e n times it will be n e and r naught would be n into r n identical cells in series that's what you're going to have now let us see cells in parallel you see cells in parallel you would like to know what is the equivalent emf of cells in parallel and the equivalent internal resistance cells in parallel i got e1 r1 this is e1 r1 I have another cell E2 internal resistance is R2 E3 and R3 this is E3 R3 all of them connected to an external resistor R the current through the first cell is I1 the current through the second cell is I2 from here this is I3 and all these add up to give I the external resistor ok all these add up to give an external resistor so I have basically I is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3 I is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3 now I need to get all this I1, I2 and I3 in terms of E1, R1 etc. So what I am basically going to do is apply the Kirchhoff loop law which contains E1, R1 and the external resistance R. So if I go around like that, I will have minus R1, I1 minus R1 I1 plus E1 minus IR equals 0. So therefore, from this I can get I1 as E1 minus IR by R1. Similarly, if I went around this loop, that is the cell E2 and the external resistance R, if I went through the loop like that, I would get I2 is equal to E2 minus IR by R2. Similarly, I will get I3 is equal to E3 minus IR by R3. These I will substitute here. If I substitute it that, I am going to get for I1, E1 minus IR by R1 plus E2 minus IR by R2 plus E3 minus IR by R3. Yes. So let's uh, club all this. Let, let me take all the uh, uh, I terms to the club all the I terms together. What will I get? I will have I plus I R by R1 plus I R by R2 plus I R by R3 equals E1 by R1 plus E2 by R2 plus E3 by R3. So I can get I here. So I would be E1 by R1 plus E2 by R2 plus E3 by R3 by 1 plus yes, there is no I common here, I have 1 plus R by R1 plus R by R2 plus R by R3 or uh, you can uh, do one thing here 
we will write this as e1 by r1 plus e2 by r2 plus e3 by r3 i shall remove r common here so i will have 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 into r 1 by r3 into r now I know the equivalent for the equivalent cell I know if I have an equivalent cell E0 and resistance R0 this is connected to an X1 resistance R the current is I we saw that I is nothing but E0 by R0 plus R so let us get this get this i in that form now we shall divide by the numerator and the denominator by this quantity in the bracket 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 so i will get i is equals e1 E1 by R1 plus E2 by R2 plus E3 by R3 divided by 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3 the whole divided by I get 1 by 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3 yes plus R Please try to see this. I have divided the numerator and the denominator by this quantity in the bracket. So I have this in the numerator and this in the denominator. Now I will make a comparison. So I make a comparison. I got R here, here, I got R here. This whole quantity must be R0. Yes, this is R0. Okay. So if I did that, I will get 1 by I, if this is if, if 1 by 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3 is R0 I will get 1 by R0 is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3 yes so that would be the equivalent resistance what about the emf if i compare the emf e naught would be equal to e1 by r1 plus e2 by r2 plus e3 by r3 by this 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus r3 is all 1 by r0 so 1 by r0 so we would get e0 by r0 is equal to e1 by r1 plus e2 by r2 plus e3 by r3 that is how you get the equivalent emf now let us say you have n identical cells in parallel. If you have n identical cells in parallel, what is R0? You have 1 by R0 is equal to 1 by R plus 1 by R, so on. There would be n terms. So this will be n by R and R0 will simply be R by n. So the equivalent resistance will be R by n. What about the EMFs? If you take the EMFs, E0 into 1 by R0. 1 by R0 is n by R. Yes, 1 by R0, this is n by R. So, n by R. This would be 
e by r plus e by r so on n terms so that is going to be n e by r that would be n e n e by r n and r cancels and you get e naught equal to e so when you have n identical cells in parallel the equivalent emf is e and the equivalent resistance is r by n so let's write that here so you have basically n identical cells in parallel when you have n identical cells in parallel you will have e not equal to e and r not is equal to r by n so we will have the result in mind now let's go to the uh, original question where we had n identical cells capital n and we wish to form a network such that there is maximum power delivered at the external resistor so let us see how we do this problem you have basically n cells each of emf e and internal resistance r so you want to make a network of this for doing a network of this let us say we put n cells in a row small n cells in a row and we have m such rows totally we have m rows let us say we have m rows so we can say capital n the total number of cells is nothing but m into n yes so now let us write the what will be the equivalent emf and the equivalent resistance of this circuit you have the external resistor of course here so these are n cells in a row since they are n cells in a so the emf would be n into e the emf of all this would be n into e and the internal resistance will be n into r yes and you will have m such rows so the equivalent emf would be we saw when you have n identical cells in parallel the emf e not is e so here you have n e n e n e so on m rows so the equivalent emf would still be n e because e not equal to e for n identical cells in parallel and the equivalent resistance r not would be r by n here the r is n r and n is nothing but m n is nothing but m so that is the equivalent emf and the equivalent resistance so let's draw that circuit so if you draw the circuit yes come in would have a cell of emf n e internal resistance n r by m and an external resistance r and this is the current i so the current i the current i would be n e by 
total resistance n r by m plus r now here there are two variables n and m we will replace this m you know m into n m into n is capital n so n by n is 1 by m so i can write i as n e by if i replace 1 by m as n by n i'll get n squared r by n plus r that is the current as a function of n one variable now if you try to plot n is of course an integer but suppose you treat it as a variable and try to plot a graph of i versus n see how this graph would be if n is 0 if n is 0 numerator is 0 so i would be 0 so the graph starts from the origin supposing n is very large let us say uh, n is infinity n tends to a very large value let's say n is infinity then see what you get well the denominator will tend to infinity if n is very large denominator will become very large compared to the numerator because you have an n squared term in the denominator and n in the numerator or you can even put it like this bring n to the denominator so this will be e by if i divide the numerator and the denominator by n i will get okay n e by n by n r by n plus r by n so this n cancels now if n is infinity r by n is 0 and you will have infinity here this will again be 0 so for n equal to 0 i is 0 for n equal to infinity also it is 0 so there must be a maximum somewhere in between yes as n tends to infinity i is 0 at n equal to 0 also it is 0 so in between it is non-zero so therefore it must attain a certain maximum value now we know that power is i squared r so the graph of power will also be like that power versus n is also going to be a graph like that voltage the voltage v is i into r r is a constant so voltage versus n is also going to be a graph like that of course the peaks would be uh, peak here would be the peak voltage peak here would be the peak power peak here would be the peak current so if you want to maximize the power it is as good as maximizing the current so let us maximize this so to maximize this current let us use calculus i is equals n e i will write this as n squared r by n plus r raised to minus 1 let us differentiate this and put this equal to 0 so i will say di by dn will be equal to use the product rule derivative of n with respect to n is 1 so 1 into e into the whole thing n squared r by n plus r raised to minus 1 now keep n e as it is differentiate this minus 1 into n squared r by n plus r minus 2 into derivative of whatever is inside the chain rule so this will be 2n into r by n yes this would be equal to, should be equated to 0 if you equate this to 0 see what you you would get e by n squared r by n 
plus r. I have brought raised to minus one. I have brought it to the denominator. Here I will have uh, minus two n squared e r minus two n squared e r by n into divided by n squared by r by n plus r raised to the power of 2 raised to the power of 2 that is equal to 0 so e would cancel out and if I simplify this and took the LCM I will have n squared r by n plus r minus 2 n squared r by n the denominator will get multiplied to 0 this is equal to 0 and I will have r is equal to this term would be n squared r by n or that will give me n is equal to square root of n r by r square root of n r by r that is this value this is root of n r by r everywhere. Here also it will be root of n r by r. That is where the peak occurs. So you can actually calculate the peak current. How can you calculate the peak current? The peak current can be calculated by substituting the value of n. What you have received to get the peak value. So let's do that. Let's see what is the peak current. The peak current would be I I max I will call it. I max would be equal to n. n is root of n r by r into e divided by n squared. n squared is n r by r into r by n into r by n plus r so here this r cancels this n cancels you have 2 r so you have this as root of n r by r into e by 2 r or this is nothing but uh, root of n I will take this 2 into the root, put it as 4 and this root r and r will be root r so r into e that is the peak value of the current I max root of capital N by 4 r r into e what will be the power, maximum power p max p max would be simply i max squared into r what is i max squared? i max squared is n by 4 r r into e squared into r. That will be the maximum power. What is the maximum voltage? V max. V max is simply i into r. i max into r. V max is i max into r. What is i max? You saw this. This is root of n by 4 r r into e into r so that will give v max as that will give v max as v max is equal to i max uh, uh, root of n by 4 r r into e into r I just rewritten that now the r will cancel and I will have a root of n r by 4 r into e yes root r and r cancels as root r so root of n dimensionally you can see uh, the maximum voltage is dimensionally equal to the EMF E. 
So R and R will add the dimension of ohms will cancel in the numerator and the denominator and uh, Vmax has the same dimension as P. Now let us take uh, some numerical based on this to understand how we can apply this. Supposing you are given that N is 20. There are 20 cells. The internal resistance is 0.5 ohms. Yes. And there are three cases for R given, capital R. Capital R could be 500 ohms, 0.05 ohms, or 2.5 ohms. You would like to know how the connections can be made to maximize power in the external resistor R. So, Let's calculate n, small n. So, to calculate small n, let's use this formula. So for 500, for 500, this would be 20, let me write it weekly, first one, this is the first case, second and third. So in the first case, N would be equal to root of, capital N is 20, capital R is 500 and you have uh, rs small r as 0.5 so this is going to be square root of 20,000 square root of 20,000 uh, you have square root of 2 as 1.414 and you would have a 100 100 10,000 so this will be 141 n is 141 now obviously the total number of cells itself is 20. So, small n cannot be 141. So, n has to be maximum value it can take is 20. So, small n is 20. Which means that you should connect all the cells in series. Take the second case. In the second case, n would be 20 into 0 0.05 by 0.5 so this would be square root of 2 0.5 by 0.05 is 0 0.1 0 0.1 to 22 this is 1.414 yes that is what n should be so n will take a value 1 n will take a value 1 if n takes a value n1, then all the cells are in parallel. n equal to 20 means all in series. n equal to 1. In each row there is 1 means. And n equal to 1 means all in parallel. There will be 20 parallel circuits. Since there are capital N is 20, there will be 20 parallel circuits. In third case, n is square root of 20 into 2.5 by 0.5 that will be square root of 100 0.5, 2.5 by 0.5 is 5 520 is 100 so that is 10 so uh, there is going to be 2 rows each row containing 10 cells and there will be 2 such rows because M would be N by N which is 20 by 10 so there will be 2 rows each row having uh, 10 cells that is how the power can be maximized in each of these cases thank you